What's going on, YouTube? It's NCA, a place to be chilling with Mr. A and E. Back here with another midweek wrestling war. I know it has been a while, but guys, we are back doing this thing. And of course, joining me is not Deion Sanders Prime Primetime. All right, y'all. What's up? Look, y'all know why we're here. Y'all know why we here. We here because of the AEW side. Look, ain't nobody, ain't, ain't no, ain't no shade to NXT 2.0 stuff like that. But I'll be honest with you right now, ain't have nearly as what's going on what happened in AEW Dynamite. We had a Texas Death Match in Dynamite. We had uh, the Forbidden Door. Who was coming and who was debuting on Dynamite tonight? And of course, we had CM Punk and actually who changed his who changed his trucks, bro. Yeah, I'm just glad he found him out. I'm glad I don't know where AJ was hiding him at, but I'm glad he found him. And I mean, on NXT, we just got Dolph Ziggler, which didn't really move the needle, you know, and Santos and stuff like that. So, as y'all can tell by the yawn that I had, that's how I felt about NXT this week. But you know, I'll just do, I'll give y'all guys a quick recap to be, to be fair. And it was a women's championship match. So, starting off at NXT, uh, like I said, oh, then they had the Dusty Rose Classic semifinal. Grizzly Young Veterans taking on the Creed Brothers. Creed Brothers dominated here. Brutus gives a strong lariat to, I forgot which one, which one it was, and they end up with the Creed Brothers and the win the match. Which I didn't go into the finals. Uh, Wendy Chu taking on uh, Tiffany Stratton. Uh, you know, that's the my daddy. She had a nice uh, sprint. Was it sp no split? Legged or no? I, what I don't know what it was, but it was like you know. Well, when she was, twisted, spin around. Yeah, like she was down the oh, rack. She, she spin around. I was like, it, it was mm -hmm. clean. It was clean. So Tiffany Stratton does pick up the win. Pete Dunn versus D Draco Anthony. That's the guy that was at the coffee shop. Uh, that that uh new guy. But I was like, okay, so how's he gonna do? But of course, he he loses to the bitter end. But after the matchup, uh. He snaps Tony D'Angelo's fingers because they're still in this rivalry, and he challenges him to a steel cage match with all types of weapons up there. So, lethal lockdown. Basically. Sanga, or, or Sanga, or whatever it is, with, with uh, Grayson Wild takes on LA Knight. LA Knight wins the matchup after he hits him with his Dean Ambrose finisher. <laughs> okay. Uh, Leg <laughs> Legato Del Fantasma is in the ring. Uh, they, they won a shot at Braun Breakers, or well, Santos won a shot at the NXT Championship, Glaze on the Cruiserweight division. But then Dolph Ziggler comes out and uh, with, with the contract signing. And, by, 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 by the way, it's on sci fi. And then uh, Chopper comes out, and then look, uh, Chopper you know, talks some trash to Ziggler. They start fighting, and then Santos and them, as my wife will call them, fights Braun Breaker, puts him through a table. So Ray comes back and to face Dakota Kai, and uh, so Ray is back now. Picks up a win and and hits that. Uh, I didn't know that was even Dakota Kai. To be honest with you. Yeah, she uh, wore it down that much. Say what? She wore it down that much. Yeah, she is. Unfortunately, Dusty Rose Class Tag Team Classic Semifinal: MSK taking on Idris, uh, Ifo, and Malik Blade. Uh, they had a good showing here, but MSK wins the matchup. So the finals is MSK taking on the Creed Brothers. I got the Creed Brothers, so we are going to make sure that the Creed get the win here. NXT Women's mm -hmm. Championship, Mandy Rose taking on Kaylee Ray. Uh, not a big... F well, I wasn't a fan of this match at, much at all. But Toxic Attraction gets involved, knocks Killary off the top row. Mandy Rose hits her knee attack and wins the matchup. There you have it. So I've seen... Uh, um. I seen a gif of Mandy like running into this black guy. I don't know who he is though. Mm, I gotta see that gif too. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Make sure he one of us. It's just like it's just a random black guy. Then like she uh she like was running away from somebody. Then like they bumped into each other. Oh, I gotta see this. Yeah, I know. I know you probably sent to me eventually. So um, after the <laughs> matchup, I did. I, don't, I didn't care that much to even know who his name is. <laughs> Uh, Tops of Traction starts beating up on uh, Kaylee Ray, and then all of a sudden, here comes Io Shirai at like, the big return. I was like, return? She didn't really go nowhere, I don't think. Oh, and, she was running from Io, I believe. Oh, okay. 
Well, something like that. Eokin and there took out Tasha Tash- Tash- Trash, and that was NXT. So there you guys have it. It was a quick recap of NXT. Like I said, we we, we were more focused on what was going on on Dynamite. So let's go over to AEW Dynamite. Uh, we are uh, Dynamite is live from you know God, I don't know where, where they at. Honestly, I, I would assume Texas because you know. Oh yeah, Texas Deathmatch. That's right. Ha ha. I would assume, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So, Tony guys huge announcement in a circle meeting. Uh, that's the what's the one thing I did miss? I did not catch the whole inner circle team meeting, but I do know it led to, at least to a tag team match between Jericho and Jake Hager against, against Santos and uh, not Santos, damn, uh, Santana and Ortiz next week. Mm-hmm. So. Well, beginning when MG, MGF comes out to the ring, they have like, these cut-out pictures of him, of, of the win that he got over CM Punk, off there with the old pinnacle. And he talks about, you know, that he's the best in the world now, but actually he's better than the best in the world because uh, he beat the best in the world. And then mm-hmm. CM Punk ain't trying to hear that shit. CM Punk comes out. Oh, well, and, you missed the best part. Which one? He did the Cody entrance. <laughs> oh, God. They he did. came out in the Cody Tunnel. <laughs> okay, you are right about that one. I did miss that part, yeah. So you said he beat hey, uh, Real quick, Tony Schiavone, man, he, he is hilarious. He came out and then um, he was just like, yeah, I hope they drop him. Oh, yeah, I hope he they was, drop him. He, he, he was pissed at the... He, he said, oh, about time he, he came out so he could shut up. Oh, since he beat him twice in Chicago, of course CM Punk comes out and he brings Tony Schiavone to the stage and he says, you know, his win last week was as about as a subject as his spray tan. And then he, he brought some friends this time. So Darby on his stink comes out and he says, so he wants a rematch. But he, I, he said, I ain't talking to you, Jerry. I'm talking to the big man. I'm talking to Warlow. He's the only one that beat me in Chicago. So I want a rematch with Warlow. So he says, so tell me what's going to be. Am I going to... Coming out there and beat beat the hell out of you, or are you going to get some balls and leave these guys? So, of course, MJF is trying to say, you know, that uh, I I beat you by myself last week, and CM Punk trying to aid that on. He said me and Warlow are best friends, but uh, FTR he says, you know what? Look, man, I don't like wearing the suits and stuff like that. So he said, if you want to match with the best tag team in the world, then you know you you got one right now. So. We go to, you know, commercial breaks, something like that. So, uh, when we come back, Darby Allen says that, you know, his Andrade beginning to get him to try to work for him. I'm like, what the hell is Andrade doing? Andrade is almost falling onto that Sean Spears thing. Like, what are you, you, your career over here is not that much better than what it was. I'm like, so we, we got to change something up about uh, Andrade. You, know, you need to get him somebody that can talk, obviously. Yes, because I don't know why they got rid of Chavo Guerrero, to be honest with you. Because they was, they was going to, you, you know why. It was going to yeah. be, going to bring uh, this man in and then they couldn't. But, you know. So we have uh, Warlow versus the Blade right now. And uh, Warlow uh, does the whole powerbomb thing to crowd change, change one more time. And he hits another powerbomb and another and another. And then he just stands on the blade and gets the victory. So Warlord wins there. And then uh, Sean Spears comes out and attacks uh, Blade with a chair. And that's it. We get to uh, a Penta video package. And Chris Jericho makes his entrance in with... Oh, you just going to skip over that? He's getting Penta Dark? You don't... Oh, Penta Dark. Well, that's a, yes. That's from Jericho 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 because, you know, <laughs> Fiends is probably going to be out for like all 2022. So nah, he wasn't that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't that injured. For not to come back so, the whole year, you know, he he'll break his arm and then come back the next week. So, so Jericho is out and have an inner circle meeting. I missed the inner circle meeting. Did anything good happen uh-huh. in there? Sammy left and then they broke up. Finally, so Finally. Sammy went. Well, Sammy went solo and then. The other two went into teams. Finally, because he he just looked stupid out there with that TNT championship. Like, why are you still hanging with these guys? Yeah, but I'm glad I got him on my on my team. So we're good. Exactly. I got Santana Ortiz, so I got I got faith in them. Well, hey, 
After um, you're not about to say Jericho and Hager about to. Uh, t- no, 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 uh, no, no. I was gonna say after they g- get out their few, I hope you see them. <laughs> I think we, I think we go for the tag team championship over. Oh, over my team. And who's your team again? Who who, who uh, got Red them? Dragon? Oh, mean, oh, over 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 Red Dragon. They just gonna win over like everybody. I don't know. Wait, hold, we'll have to see. Hold on. I want you to take your hand and put it to your top of your forehead like a visor. Where where have they been? Where has Prada been? All right. <laughs> I have not seen Red Dragon. I've seen Red Dragon. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, you, you was about to say, where's Prada Party? I said, I ain't got Prada Party. I like him, but I ain't got him on there. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Cassie makes his uh, interest with Mark Quinn. And Matt Hardy, this is a face the revolution match. That's what I don't like. What? I mean, I would not have had Andrade be squashed or anything, but I would have had somebody of note in this match if it was gonna make sense. Damn. Because obviously the winner of this goes to the ladder match. So it's like, you know, Cassidy won't win it, whoever he was fight- facing. You know, you do got a point on that one. I, I, I would have probably put it in some place to the point like, okay, somebody that can actually go to his last match and win. I got you. Yeah, like, Maybe uh, like, like, I didn't want to say what? Andrade, but he's in the group, so that's why I said him first. You know what? If not, then, what, what about like a, a Scorpio Sky or Ethan Page? Yeah, like one of them. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Well, who comes out? Basket is glory. Now, he don't have that same song. I wish that would I wish that would have been his intro and then they would have went to something, to whatever song he got. I wish it because that's still my ringtone, dude. I wish it would have mm-hmm. been that too. I wish it would. It could have been like a basket in this glory, dun dun, dun whatever they go through, whatever. Yeah. Oh, basket is glory, and Keith Lee is here. And I'm talking about. It's so good to see Keith Lee do Keith Lee shit. I've missed that a lot. Okay, because it was good to see him one take that damn singlet off. That that whole wrestling top he was wearing. Mm-hmm. That made him look even fatter. And and uh, the Joe pants. And the Joe pants, yeah. It, it was good to see him lose lose that bullshit. And then on top of that, he got to do the Keith Lee stuff. The whole, the whole Keith Lee exchange where, you know, he does the leapfrog and it goes down on the floor and it does, it does the, the drop kick. Like, what? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I realized I missed that. And you know, the last time we saw that was at Survivor Series? Because mm-hmm. when he got my ball, he didn't do that shit. Yeah. And then he does, you know, he comes in there and just does the, he does the whole Keith Lee stuff, the, the springboard. He he barely sells for Isaiah Cassidy, even though he get he, he gets him a little cheap shot on the outside. And he get, does like turns a out, turns out Keith Lee got over for just being Keith Lee. You know, no. you don't who, who say thought? who who would have thought, right? You don't say because the crowd was popping for for Keith Lee just being Keith Lee, and he comes into the ring and look. Make make long story short, he hits uh Isaiah Cassidy with the big uh big bank catastrophe because you know he he had to use a spirit bomb, and after the match, Prior Party starts beating him up, but then all of a sudden, what I like was Isaiah Cassidy starts diving the outside, but he barely gets anything on Keith Lee. Oh, so speaking of speaking of uh not Cassidy, well, what's up with Quinn's hair? I don't know what it's. I never Mark Quinn be the one that got the weirdest hair. He like bald on the side and in the middle, and then on one side he got like plaques. Then on the other side he got like a fro. Yeah, I I don't know what the hell's going on at all. With uh, yeah, Quinn's I don't shit. know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Mark Quinn's shit. Shit. Yeah. He he goes and dives to the outside like does does like actually this, huge this. ass dive, mm-hmm. and Keith Lee catches him in the power bomb form. Power bombs him on Isaiah Cassidy, he picks him back up, and then power bombs him on the apron, and Keith Lee's over that quick. Mm-hmm. He destroys Power Party. And he got over just being Keith Lee. You don't say it, right? And I don't understand why the fuck is that so hard. Honestly, this is something that WWE should be ashamed of themselves. They don't deserve Keith Lee. That's a huge loss in, in my eyes. Literally. Losing, yeah, literally, literally and figuratively. Losing Keith Lee was, it is like, you gotta look at that and be like, what the fuck? Because we. They got a chance to make this guy a huge star. Like, mm-hmm. like TNT champion, I can see it. 
you know. Uh, and then, of course, I definitely see the AEW champion in the future. After Hangman's done with his run by Ozzy, I think Adam Cole will take that. And who wouldn't want to see an Adam Cole versus Keith Lee match again? Mm-hmm. I know I damn sure would. I know I damn sure would. Um, we we uh, Dunder Rosa taking on Mercedes Martinez. Uh, uh, it's gonna be next week on Dynamite, I think. I'm not sure. Or because I know they tried to have a match on Rampage, but I didn't get a chance to see Rampage if that actually went through. I didn't have another match, but it's time for the tag team matchup. FTR taking on CM Punk, and he comes in with a partner, John Moxley. So it's John Moxley taking on C- uh, John Moxley, and CM Punk taking on FTR. Good matchup, even a picture in picture by these two. Uh, there were a lot of close calls in this matchup. There was a a shatter machine, which I still enjoy calling it. Or seeing Punk, which I swore that was the end. But it looked like Mox was on the outside, like, waiting for the cue because I don't know if they're going to get in position or not. Then he comes in and breaks it up because it kind of looked kind of awkward on the outside. Uh, meanwhile, what the hell is Tully Blanchard they keep doing? Hey, the old guy said it, they still can go. I would say from later what we see. He come in there, and he is trying to text CM Punk and slam him some of that. It ain't, it ain't fucking working. And then trying to get him up for the GTS was bad. And him selling it was worse. I'm sorry. And you know you know I'm not lying. Mm-mm. Uh they get to their feet and then all of a sudden uh Punk hits the GTS on cash while Moxie hits the paradigm shift on Dax and then uh Punk makes the cover and then CM Punk and John Moxie wins. Next up is the TBS Championship. Jay Cargill taking on AQA. That's why I text you. I was like, who the hell is AQA? Well, yeah, she was from NXT. But I also f- found out what well, she said in her promo that she's one of Booker T students. Yeah. I was like, okay, because, you know, he, he produced a lot of people at his wrestling school, his promotion. I, yeah, I, he been giving them to the Performance Center, and then <laughs> they've been treating him like trash. So I guess he stopped giving them away. <laughs> He was like, you know what? I ain't gonna cheat my doing a trip. Because first of all, did Ember Moon come from, from Booker T? Yeah, so did the Usos. Usos came from Booker T? Yeah. He the one that gave them the name. I did. I, yo, dead serious. Mind blown. Kind of like finding out that Eddie Kitchens did, did not single Silent Night. That did not know that. <laughs> <coughs> they, were in the, they were in the stable together. I remember Ember Moon and the Usos in the stable together in Booker T's. That, that, that was his reality of wrestling, right? Yeah. And I remember Aaron Moon was. I, I was like, "Oh snap! I did not. I did not know. Cause I thought they was trained by Rikishi and Gang Grill. Probably early on, but they got started with Booker. Gotcha. Okay. What? Aside note, who else? Who else is Booker got got on his talent pool? Ooh, a lot. <laughs> I, there's a lot of people to name, honestly. I'm just saying, but the, like, I, I'm not saying anybody. I'm just saying like, out the main ones. I know Ember Moon. I know about the, now. I know about the Usos. I know about AQA. What's this thing called again? Reality, reality, reality of wrestling, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I just wanted. To, I'm, I'm trying to think. Who, <laughs> who, who, who else? Cause I would love to know who else. They can't. Let can't me see if I can find. Let me see if I can find some people that. Well, that meanwhile. Can't uh, this matchup is, it, it, it goes long enough that it goes for picture in picture. I was like, I was asking the Jay Cargill match to go for this long. But AQA is sitting there, and she's actually bringing the fire. Hits a crossbody on Cargill, but it doesn't move. She's a sling blade on Cargill, and the forearm. Tries to nail DDT, and it goes to the top, and uh, it's a shooting star press. Uh, cover, but it's only a two count. She goes to the, the, the top again. It looks like she doesn't know what she's trying to do. And then she kind of like falls down. Then she catches her to like a cross body spinning slam. It looked good. Everybody, even Twitch probably like, what the hell was that? It looked good. And then she hits her with the uh, with the uh, jaded. And it's over. One, two, three. So, real quick say? on the on the Booker thing. Yeah. I don't know if you know who Roxy is. She's the former... Uh, Ring of Honor champ. Okay. She, you know, he, she just came from there. Tons of job, I don't, I don't want to call them job, tons of P 
people have come from there. A lot of them are on AEW, but they're like on dark and stuff. So they're getting their getting their start, their work in dark and okay. dark elevation. Uh, I don't know, you know who high end high end is high end. Yeah, is that is that an Asian competitor? Uh, I'm not gonna answer that because I don't know for sure. <laughs> oh, how about that? I thought I'd say something wrong. No, I don't know for sure. Okay, but there's been there's been lots of people that you would know that you probably would you probably see their face and don't know them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, after that, Serenity makes her entrance, and she says it took her three minutes to defeat Sky Blue, and there isn't a woman in the back on her level. Nobody can go back. Uh, can nobody in the back can go five minutes with her? So now she Serenity was issuing the five minute rookie challenge. So she goes she sure. against uh Katie Arquette and she mm-hmm. makes her tap out immediately. So if this is a little new thing, I'm with it. I like it, but then uh I know they're gonna start picking off their all their uh dark talent. So like Casey Lennox, um Alexia Gray maybe, uh Rosa Del Negro um, she fought Sky, right? Yeah, she fought. She fought Sky Blue. Okay, yeah. Sky. Maybe Lena Gray. Like they got like six or seven people that they interchange uh, for Dark. Gotcha. So she might she might face all of them and then somebody uh, they come in and beat the challenge. Okay. Kind of like Taylor okay. Wilde did with the uh, Awesome Car. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. It, it, it may be it may be like Taylor Wilde or something. Not damn, not Taylor Wilde. You didn't have to say Taylor Wilde. Uh, a car sheeter. It could be. Yeah. Or it could be somebody new to get them over. That too. Next up is a Texas Death match between for the AEW World Championship. Hangman Page taking on Lance Archer. Uh, the the match starts in the back because uh, Hangman Page is beating up Lance Archer. And then uh, he like kind of beats them up into the into like the stage, kind of like how Lance Archer has his entrances, and mm-hmm. that's how that's how the fight starts. And then uh, he takes the belt, hits him, hits Lance Archer with it, and then those will do like this little th- th- this plexiglass thing on the stage. So we are already here for it. So uh, we go down to the ring, and then all of a sudden. Uh, Page hits a buckshot layer on Archer, falls to the outside, and everybody starts to count out. Now, in my personal opinion, isn't a Texas death match you gotta pin the punt, the opponent first, then he's got the tank out? Oh, depending on depending on your ruling. Sometimes it's just a count out, sometimes it's a pin and count out. So but they call it something minute. different. So it's basically this is this, this is just a last minute. Just a last minute. Pretty much. Yeah, because I cause he, remember when when, when Mickey well, or you I, can do a submission. Okay, now remember when Mickey and Diana Perazzo did a Texas Death Match? She had to mm-hmm. pin her first. They started yeah, they have it. different. They have different versions of it. Okay, me personally, I like, like the the one that you're talking about. They that's usually uh, just a. It's usually just a death match where it's another name for it, not the city that they're in, but it's another name for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just can't think of it. Well, for personally. From it separating itself from a last man standing match, I personally like the the pin them and then you know do the count. But I guess he didn't want to mm-hmm. pin the champion or pin Lance Archer on TV. So, but so well, I mean, yeah, you don't want to do the you don't want to do a uh, like a a grudge match will more be that way, but not a championship match because you can't be having him getting pinned multiple times and then getting counted. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. So, Dan Lambert comes down, and he unscrews the top turnbuckle so he can't he can't do the uh, the buckshot Larry, which I think is actually kind of smart. Mm-hmm. And then then Jake Roberts comes out because he came out from his vacation to, in Florida, and uh, <laughs> they both brawl to the crowd. Archer goes for a choke slam, uh, steps onto the wall, hits a moonsault. I thought that was kind of cool, and then. Uh, he tries to go for a buckshot area again when he comes back to the ring, but the top rope is gone. So now, Archer, uh, Page are 
fighting, and there's two tables set out on the outside. So Paige shot hit a big boot. And first of all, both these guys are bleed. Anna Page got some gushing during the picture in picture, so I didn't even see how it happened. He just came mm-hmm. back, crimson masses going on. So there's two tables. And I, I wasn't watching at this time either. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, uh, he tried try, try to go to run and, and knock him onto the two tables, but then Archer stops him. And then uh, kind of like uh, throws him into the middle turnbuckle. Then all of a sudden, they go see the outside. Here comes Jake Roberts and starts and tries to give Paige a short arm clothesline. And Paige, he tries. He gave it to him. What you mean? Paige, Paige sold it, okay? Because he gave it to him, Because man. the way he was trying to twist that arm, I was like, oh, my God, Jake. And so he did it, and he clean closed line. He closed on the hell out of him. He didn't fall. He, okay, he didn't fall. He, I think Tully was the you know the bad old person award today. Uh, he goes for a DDT. Uh, now, now, when he went, I look, he wanted him to do it, because I was like, oh, he's going to die. Yeah, like, I, I was like, yeah. because, you know, he, I, he's going to die. You might as well die for the belt. So. It, it, you know what? Because a Jake Roberts DDT, because I kind of wanted to see him slap, slap the back, you know, and do it. Mm-hmm. But then Archer uh, pulls him off and Paige hits uh, the DDT on the floor on Archer as he's distracted. Then we get to the candlesticks and then we bring a trash should have did it to, uh, to Roberts, but I, I guess he can't take, take a bump. Yeah, not like that. He should have did something to Roberts, not just push him out of the way and then that's it. And, he, and then Roberts just walked to the back. Like I would have, I would have loved him have a buckshot Larry, but no, they ain't gonna do that to Jake Roberts. I think he can do that. He can do that and then like sell it as a whoa and then fall on his knee or something. I don't know. <laughs> he something. He he took that one bump where he. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, there's a trash can in the ring, and uh, Lance Archer chokes says, I mean, Adam Page, Hangman Page gets high on this choke slam. And right on the trash can, and it just flattens. The whole entire trash can just flattens. It's, it was a good visual. And then uh, Archer hits the cannonball sent out to the outside. And he gets a couple chips in the ring. And he throws one of the chips and actually hits Adam Page on the inside. Then there's a barbed wire chair that he gets out. And uh, he takes his steel system and puts him on the side. He takes Adam Page and he gives him the blackout. Off the apron onto the steel steps, turned to the side. No, no, no. He was no. That was in the ring. The steel steps was on the outside. No, he was in the ring. I think he tossed him in the ring to out the ring. I believe. I thought it was. Well, let's let oh, unless Archer just so tall it looked like he was in the ring, tossed him out the ring. I think I think it was on the apron because you really okay. got you really, you really got to be able to hit that move perfectly if you're gonna be inside the ring. And oh, okay. Oh, hey. yeah. But uh, whatever the case may be. That shit look great because they showed the replay of it and shards of steel from the steps started they they explode. The whole steps didn't break, but shards of steel exploded from the steps. I was like, God it had to hurt. I never seen I never seen that kind of spot before. Yeah. Uh Archer goes for uh back in the ring, Archer goes for a power bomb of pain. Oh wait, let me let me just clarify real quick. He was in the ring because the the top buckle was missing. Got gotcha. you. There you go. Yes. There you go. Okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, so he goes in there. Uh, Archer goes for a power bomb. Patience with the bar wire that he got from the steel chair. Then he wraps his arm like in the bar wire. Uh, up to about his elbow. Patience is a German, and then Patience is a buckshot to Archer through both the tables that's on the outside. The referee hits the 10 count. Hangman Page retains the world championship. Afterwards, Adam Cole comes out and just picks up the belt and puts it on uh, Adam Page's shoulder. And then that's how Dynamite goes off the air. So, Mm -hmm. damn good Dynamite. uh, I'm not going to say damn good. You know what? No. I like Dynamite this week. It was fine to me. Keith Lee showed up. Only one thing I got to complain about. No Cody? No. No, no. Uh, it was it was like this whole week was like building up to this big announcement, and there was no big announcement unless was was was, was uh, Jay White or Keith Lee the big announcement, or was that That's it? That's right. Jay White did come, and I was like, 
I, well, I mean, because it, it was this whole big forbidden door announcement, and I was just like, all right, well, but I guess to keep he didn't, was but, it, but yeah, but I'm saying like there was no announcement. Like it was, cons- they was like, oh, he's gonna make a big announcement, but there was no announcement made. It really wasn't. I thought he was probably, so, probably gonna say something about the game or something, but, but he did. Yeah, so I was like, did so I was like, was was Keith Lee the, you know, like was one of those it? Because they should really like say that. <laughs> yeah, because everybody was sitting there for like Tony. Tony Khan's big announcement for Bitten Door that like we're going to have a Royal Rumble with 15 WWE superstars not really happening. But I guess if Keith Lee was supposed to be the one, I'm like, okay, well, it's an announcement, but it was kind of a letdown of an announcement. But guys, me and Prime both like AW better this week. Post that in the comments down below which one do you guys like better. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed our review. Hit the subscribe button for more uh, wrestling content right here on NC Studios along with WWE 2K22 content. So once again, this is NCM Place to be Chosen Remember Staying D, not Deion Sanders for Primetime. All right, y'all. All right, and the Nerd Coalition is out.